Okay, so the uh, third method that we'll discuss is the character characteristic direction, me direction method. Um, and this was developed by the Mayan lab. Um, and it really differs from the earlier two methods we discussed in that it is a geometric and multivariate approach to differential expression. Uh, so what I mean by that is that instead of modeling the gene expression of each gene one by one, um, this method considers that uh, there are multiple genes that might be expressed in conjunction. And this is important because we know that in uh, biology, genes tend to be regulated in networks rather than individually. Um, so in DEC2 in Lima, we saw uh, these linear modeling or gene-wise linear models of expression. Um, so those are designed to capture the uh, gene expression of one gene at a time. Um, and it's not really uh, made to capture these possible co-expression networks. Um, so the character characteristic direction uh, sort of aims to uh, include that. So it, the way this is done is uh, we compute a single vector in the gene expression space, and it points in the direction that uh, best characterizes the differential expression uh, between uh, the two study conditions. So geometrically, what's happening here is we uh, are computing a separating hyperplane in the gene expression space between the two conditions. Um, so to visually see this in a small example on the right here, if you imagine a gene expression space where, where there's just two dimensions, so there's two genes. Um, if we look at each gene individually, uh, so on these axes here, um, we aren't really going to pick up on any significant differences between that the red condition and the blue condition. Um, but instead, if we were to plot these two genes together, um, then we can kind of see that there is actually a clear separation along this dashed line. Um, and then uh, the arrow normal to this line kind of represents um, the direction in which you might expect the blue samples to shift. Uh, so from the, the blue condition to the red condition, um, that arrow sort of captures the shift in the gene expression space. Um, so that's kind of the intuition behind this approach. Um, how, oh yeah, go ahead, Avi. Yeah, I just wanna add that this method is also linear. So I think one of the statements that you made that those other methods are linear and linearity doesn't mean that it's a, uh, looking at one gene at a time. It's the actual method that uh, used to transform the data or looking at the data that like it's coming from a normal distribution. So in this particular case, we are using something that is similar to principal component analysis, which is a, considered a linear method but it can be extended to non-linear methods. So in machine learning, uh, there is a clear distinction between linear classifier or regressors and non-linear. And we know that biological data is non-linear, but linear linearity is used because it's very easy to handle mathematically. And then it does give a reasonable approximation of the um, re reality in biology or biological data for most cases. So I just want to make that distinction that this is also using linear mathematics. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry, I think I, uh, so just to clarify, uh, for DEC and Lima, those are different, not in the linear part, but the, uh, the modeling, so gene by gene, gene-wise modeling versus uh, this multivariate modeling here. Yeah, they don't consider the covariance that exists across genes. So the other two methods, Lima and DSeq and most other differential expression analysis method, they look at each gene independently uh, and they don't consider the fact that genes have a high correlation in expression. So this method, uh, consider that information and take advantage of it to potentially better identify the differences between the two conditions.
Okay. Um, so the the way that this uh, character characteristic direction vector gets computed um, is it uh, there's a regularized linear discriminant analysis that's used, um, and then so this in in gene expression space when you have a lot of genes usually this is a very computationally expensive uh, calculation, uh, but basically there are some mathematical. Uh, shortcuts that we can use to decompose and then invert that covariance matrix um, such that in the end, what would otherwise be a very costly computation um, in a high dimensional space with thousands of genes uh, actually becomes something that you can compute uh, relatively efficiently. Um, so yeah, the LDA analysis is what we use to calculate uh, that single vector uh, from the count matrix. And then um, so this CD vector, uh, as I said, it's in the gene expression space. So for N genes, this vector is going to have N components. Um, and what we use is the square of the component to quantify the contribution of the gene towards the differential expression. So essentially a larger vector component uh, is interpreted as a stronger shift in the direction of that gene. Um, and that implies a greater change in expression from one condition uh, to the other. So just to illustrate that uh, in another example, um, so imagine now we have a three-dimensional uh, gene expression space, um, and this is some synthetic data here where uh, genes one and three are differentially expressed um, across these uh, I guess blue and uh, purple control and perturbed conditions, um, but gene two is not differentially expressed. So for the uh, vector computation, we would first find the separating hyperplane. Um, and then the character, or character, uh, characteristic direction vector is the uh, normal vector to this uh, separating hyperplane. And we can see this vector lies almost uh, entirely along the axes of uh, genes one and three without much change uh, in the, along the gene two direction. Um, and if we were to go in and look at the components of this vector, we would see that genes one and three would have relatively large values and that um, the, value, the component value for gene two should be uh, very close to zero. Um, so that's sort of how this uh, differential expression uh, gets captured inside the characteristic direction vector. I also want to add that this method was invented by Neil Clark, who was a postdoc in the lab in the mid 2010, uh, 2010s, and he uh, had a PhD from uh, University of Cambridge in astrophysics. So he came up with this method and then uh, we published it at that time. So you should get the credit for it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that, oops, that paper uh, is cited here and then that's also listed at the end. Um, okay. Okay, so yeah, now when it comes to testing for differential expression, um, this will look a bit different from DEC2 and LIMA because uh, our estimates um, that we're testing are now these squared vector components rather than a log fold change. Um, so since we don't have uh, much prior knowledge about what the null distribution of uh, those component values might be, we can use permutation testing to try and simulate it. Um, and if you remember from last week, permutation testing is uh, just taking n random permutations of the data and then calculating uh, the test statistic, or in this case, the vector components to estimate the null distribution. Um, uh, so permutation testing, it does require uh, you know, a sufficient sample size to be able to do that. Um, so in the cases where uh, sample size is not enough, then an alternative would be to uh, simulate the draws from uh, the same distribution. So you're assuming there are no differences in expression between the conditions that you're studying. Uh, so you draw uh, all from the same distribution. 
and then you compute uh, uh, like a null characteristic direction vector um, to get the expected component values uh, for each gene rank, assuming uh, that there is no differential expression. Um, and then that generates your null distribution for uh, the component values for a given rank in that vector.